This episode, we're going to take on Cypher, which it's represented by this guy called Smarten, I believe. Yeah, so he starts out of Cacnea and Hauntail. Uh, nothing really interesting there. Yeah, see if Cacnea goes down easily. Yes. Look how he just sort of tumbles around. Yeah. And the Princess Teddy Ursa. Oh, that looks familiar. Yes, it does. <laughs> you know, the first one. You know, watch episode one if you're confused. You know. And watch the rest of the videos, too. Since you're obviously very confused, you gotta watch the first ones. <laughs> Yeah. I see the um, shadow wave sucking like usual. Uh, I don't know why I'm not targeting. Huntail. Because the dead ears is giving me looks, that's why. On oh, Rock Tomb, yes, I'm pretty sure that gave me. You know, that prompted me to attack it. Yeah, luckily, Seal doesn't have its ice subtype. Yeah, but it's lowered the speed, like, you know, it's the lowest one on the field anyway. Yeah, take a chunk. Maybe a small chunk. And yep. Just slash. Ooh, man, yeah. The Teddy Ursus are, you know, they very strong in small packages. <laughs> As in, you know, teddy bear sized packages. Evil teddy bear sized packages. Yeah, Hunt Hill isn't going down. He's like, I ain't going down as I swim around the circles, as in not swim, I mean float. Still confusing, eh? <laughs> why can't they, like, you know, pop on the floor? Or being like the fish tank? No, why, why can't they be portable fish tanks and Pokeballs? You know, like, I understand, you know, the, the, the you know, Quagsires and Squirtles, and you can stand up, you're just like fish. Floating around the air, like, come on. And what's it all? Joltia, help me out here. I don't think this guy, I'm pretty sure this guy has a Shadow Pokemon eventually. I don't think he does, actually. I think he's one of the few Cypher Second Command people that don't have, um, you know, below admin. Yeah. They don't have a Shadow Pokemon on them. Okay, ooh, level 30. Yay, level up. I like that flag, you know, it's just like, hey, put a cheap movement in. Like, okay, let's just put it back and forth. Yeah, like, literally going back and forth. Uh, let's not learn double kick. It's okay, okay move, but nah. Quick Attack has, you know, if I was going to replace him, could replace it. Quick Attack and Quick Attack has priority, full speed priority. Yes, and there is his shock, uh, coughing. Yeah. Non shadow coughing. Yeah, so let's use Thunder Shock coughing. Let's finish everything on the Shadow Wave. Can we wait till I get Thunderbolt? Like, you know, forever or now. About nine videos, actually. Um, not nine, but eight. Eight videos, I believe. Eight or nine. <laughs> yeah, a rough estimation of a number I can easily look up. I can't while I'm voicing. It's like too freaking post commentating. Which I guess it does give me, you know, time to look things up. Yeah. It's a sludge. Okay, shadow wave. Clap, clap. A little seal. Okay, and Hunt Hail is down. Roar. Okay. It's like, well, how do I float in the air of a water type? Yes. I was thinking, comp yeah, contemplate. Contemplates before he loses consciousness. The whole sentence is mispronounced. S no, mispronounced. Yeah. Ooh, the irony. Yeah, you, sp you spelled properly wrong. <laughs> yeah, okay. And that was him. Yes. Uh, yet smarten. Even though the other guy was doing all the math. <laughs> so I don't really see the, you know, the, the pun right there. And he leaves and, oh look, it's a hobo. And this guy gives him, he gives you his life story, pretty much. Yeah, and he was watching us battle through that little window. Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, so he's basically saying thank you for getting rid of the cypher people. As he, um... Oh, I think he explains this in a minute. Yes. Uh, we use where I'm gonna. Yes, yeah, so we can come back here. We're tired. This will be the uh, Pokemon Center, sort of. He then takes his really annoying strength spots to look it up here every time. <laughs> yeah. So this is um, a hobo who found the ship and decided to make it a home out in the middle of the desert, and says there's a really weird noise he hears. 
on the bottom floor. And he wants us to investigate it because he's too scared. Which is weird because he's a hobo. You, you, you know, you should have no fear. Anyway, we're going to go down the stairs. And, okay, and there's Battle CD-8 clean right there on the floor. And you can't leave. I should point that out. This is required. Like, even saying no, he'll, you know, use his hobo charm. <laughs> we'll make sure you do it. Anyway, go over here. We have a couple chests, and this one has a strength puzzle. So you'll have to push it forward like that, and then go around here, and you have to hop off. Yeah, like that, you can push it. Yeah, and then you can go over here. And... And, oh, yeah, you need to do that. The, these strength levels are really annoying. I'll show you, you know. So I'm trying to, like, inch. One thing I found out, though, I'll be showing out later. If you um, press the D-pad on the um, on the GameCube controller that you're probably using to play with this. And, you no, know, this is a virtual console any time in the future. Yeah, even then, you probably, well, I don't know. I think the classic controller has the D-pad, uh, D too. That you, you know, just press it and your guy will barely step forward. It really makes this a lot easier. All right, there we get a Firestone. So, you know, we can, you know, go help Dr. Zed out of his house by pressing a switch. So his garage door opens, you know. Yeah. No one got that reference. <laughs> There's two PPP ups right there. Really cool. I, personally, like I said in um, Ruby, I don't use any stat boosters. Well, I use them to sell them. They gain, you know, quick 4,900 bucks off of them. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, this one, you'll need to push it all the way back. Under square, okay. And then you push it forward, so you get the one chest right there. These things are freaking annoying. Yeah, and th this isn't the last time you've seen either. I'm pretty sure there's one or two more times you have to do strength puzzles. There's a math axe ether right there, always welcomed. Now yeah, the other one's like the, you know, the uh, Kanto um, Victory Road where you have to use on uh, pressure plates. So doors open. That one's really annoying. But I always like how the strength puzzles how require some sort of, you know, visual represent well, I don't know. You have to like, you know, figure out what you're gonna do in your head before you do it. You know, like you need a strategy how to move the boulders properly. I'm like, yeah, I can't move it left, so I have to move it right, but if I move it down two squares, I won't be able to move it anymore. So I move it down one square. Yeah, that's one one thing about like like about the strength puzzles. For sure, they take over, take forever, and you screw up. You have to start everything over in most cases. But you know, of course, you're thinking right right there. That's me pressing on the D-pad, which you know really helps. I was like, wait, I can probably do this. Also, you can um, also you can like barely tilt the control stick, but also like if you use the C stick too, works too. Which is weird because you know control stick and C stick, pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, this one has no shooters, except for, I, I don't know, I never played Metroid, but I don't know if that really works, like, the classic shooter layout of the 6 ask. Uh, I guess GameCube controllers and this one will work the same way, but, you know, I should shut up before someone gets mad at me. <laughs> like, you didn't play Metroid, you have no soul. <laughs> I don't really know the newer ones, but I'm not sure how those play either. I know there's more, older ones are platformers, and the newer ones are more of a shooter style. That's all I know. I honestly, I'm not, you know, this, you know, more like RPGs and stuff. You know, I'm not, not that big of a, you know, Nintendo player. Yeah. But anyway, this puzzle, you have to fix it. There's this one right there. Yeah. Before, you know, the combat's, combat section blows up eventually. Like, I don't respect your opinion. Yeah. Well, you know, I understand your pity, but why isn't mine? Well, I guess that's sort of the same thing I'm saying, but yeah. Here's me failing to <laughs> you know, cross over because of the stupid, stupid trolls. TM35, yes, a team I've been waiting forever for. Yes, TM35 contains the old mighty move called a flamethrower, yes. And I'm going to definitely teach this move to Han, Han Doom. Yeah, I know he learns it later, like level 30 something. I don't know, I need to look that up too. But, you know, I'd rather have it now than later. <laughs> and I don't think any other Pokemon I'm going to get really need no flamethrower. Except for one, but I think I don't really know it's flamethrower when you snag it. But, 
It's not a fire type. And right here we have Yellow Flute. Very useful. It's a um, never uh, never goes away confusion fit healer. Which is really cool. Yeah, oh wait, that looks familiar. Yes, this is the uh, Bonsley that we're supposed to get. He was supposed to be on the ship. And right here we have a Luxury Ball. Useful if you're going to catch like a Zubat from the Cave Pokey spot. And... You know, so you see Numbles ready to purify from the purifying them after we get out the ship. Anyway, um, and when you get too close to him like that, he'll uh, wake up. And bum, 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 and he'll run around the other side. Then he'll go back to sleep. Because he's just so cute. Yeah. I like how, you know, he sort of has that weight thing, you know. Where he always, he's always centered on this one, yeah. Anyway, I keep on screwing up. What you don't want to do is do what I'm doing when you, like, um, barely tapping the D-pad. It was like, oh, this use worked for the strength puzzle. It could work with this one. No, you want to uh, slightly tilt forward the, um, control stick so you're, like, you know, tiptoeing closer. You know, like, you're, you know, it looks like you're almost shuffling because you've got your character's movement so bulky looking. You know, I'm not saying it's bulky in general. I'm just saying it looks bulky, you know. Normal game can really get walking, um, rock, walking down that much. Yeah. Well, no, I don't know. <clears throat> Never seen, really seen a game that really works of walking between walking and running. You know, one I guess you know running this one, you know, your strides are bigger, but you're still walking in, you know, like a fast walk. They're always pretty much the same. You know, except for the walking, it's like oh, look, my knees are bending slightly. One minute though, they're like, you know, human movements are always the hardest one to make in games. Anyway, I'm gonna try and do this one. Yes, yeah, see? It's like, oh, look, I'm totally sneaking. Yeah. There's one game I played that, like, your character looked like, oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, nothing like that thing. It looked like you actually, though, if you put slowly, the actual start to telling. I can't remember what game it was. Yeah, so anyway, um, yes, yeah, so you ran away because you got an email. From our um, RC and Gateon port saying she wants an email. I mean, wants an email, but an interview with you. We'll have to do that next time. Yes, and right there we have leftovers with Bonzi dropped. Really cool item, raises 116th of your HP every turn. Highly recommend it, but I'm probably not going to use it because it makes the battles really long. You know, every you know move has extra part of the text, so like having Kong around all over again. Sort of. Not really. Yeah. Anyway, this episode's about up. I'll see you next time. Yeah. Where we'll chase down people. See you next time.